everyone, and welcome to our instructional video on using WIND1 and WIND2 in AB Quantum. So in this video, we're going to cover really three common methods for using WIND1 and WIND2, but there are a lot of them out there. But we're going to cover three common methods. So the first most common method for using WIND1 and WIND2 is that you would put your average wind speed into wind one. And currently the 10 minute average right now is 18 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and do that. And we wanna update all of this information to make sure it's correct. And we would of course update all of our target information too. Uh, and I'll go into why later. But wind one would be our average, which is 18 and our current gusting wind speed, which is roughly 32 miles an hour. So we're going to go ahead and set this to 32 miles an hour. And now we have our current average wind uh, hold, which is 4 mils, and our gusting wind hold for this particular rifle is 7 mils at 200 yards. You do need to set the range or use your range finder to laser the target, whatever you need to do. But um, in method number one, using the average and the high gusting speed, these would be our current holds. Now, method number two. Method number two involves putting the low average and the high average into wind one and wind two. So for method two, we're not going to be using our gusting wind speed. We're just not going to shoot when the wind is gusting. What we're going to do is we're going to find our 10 minute ish uh, average low, which in our case is closer to 14 miles an hour and our 10 minute average high which in our case, I'm just watching the weather station here and getting a little bit of data, is roughly 21, 22 miles an hour. So we'll put 22. So in wind method number two, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your average low speed and your average high speed. We are not going to include our wind lull or our wind gusts for method number two. And this is what we call wind bracketing. So in this case, uh, when the average is on the low side, we'd hold three mils. And when the average is on the high side, we'd hold 4.8 mils. So what you would really want to do in this instance is you would want to, to dial roughly uh, it's 0 0.8, 3 3.6 mils. So I would dial 3.6 mils in this case. And let's take a peek here at the reticle real quick. Do note that the reticle shows where the bullet's going to impact. So the wind is going to force uh, the... Currently, we have a wind from right to left, and so that wind means that we need to adjust to the right by 3 mils in order to hit the target. That's different from what we're going to see in our reticle output view, because in the reticle output view, this is where the impact is actually going to occur, because that wind is um, essentially causing drag on that bullet in the horizontal plane, and that bullet is being pulled over to the left-hand side, and this is where that impact would occur. And so do note that solution and the reticle view are two entirely different things. This is the adjustment that I need to make in order to impact the target. And this is the adjustment, or sorry, not the adjustment, but this is visually where that round is going to impact in my reticle. So with that being said, um, to visually see how this bracket would work, uh, when I'm holding this, we're going to go from 14 to 22. So just watch here for a second and you'll see as I increase this to 22 miles an hour. So on the high end of our average here, the impact would be slightly, it'd be 4.1-ish mils, 4.2 mils. It's gonna be slightly past our subtension here. And then as I decrease that back to 14, you can see that it's slightly short of our, our three mil uh, indicator on this reticle. So that's our bracket. And if you were to dial in, you would have that bracket since it's roughly uh, just a bit over a mil. If you were to dial center of that, which is roughly 3.6, roughly 3.6 mils, then what would happen is your hold would be here from just outside the right side of the reticle to just outside the left side of this one mil subtension on the reticle. And that's method number two, using the average low and the average high uh, for this solution. 
And one more method that's used, but it's not really as commonly used, and there are many of them, is to put the lull, the wind lull, or the lowest speed that you encounter, and the wind average. So method three is that we would put our low speed. I'm just looking here at the weather station, getting a little bit of information. Our low speed really doesn't go much lower than nine. And our average currently, ooh, our 10 minute average is 21. All right, we're gonna reduce this to 18 now. 10 minute average is now 18. So method three, the least common method really, is that you would put your, your wind lull, which we've done, uh, the lowest speed that we're currently getting right now is nine miles an hour. And our 10 minute average is around 18 miles an hour at the moment. So that's method number three. And you can see our current uh, firing solution adjustments based on that. And that's really how you use wind one and wind two. So to note that again, method one, is that you put your your average wind speed and your gusting wind speed into wind one and wind two. Method two is to bracket the wind by putting your average low and your average high and building that, that bracket of those two holds as the wind increases and decreases in that average. And method three is to put your, your low wind value um, and then put your average wind value as windage number two. Now, a couple other things to note here is that wind two can never be lower than wind one. If I decrease wind two, you'll see wind one, once they are equal to each other, it will decrease wind one. Wind two can never be a lower speed than wind one, and wind one can never be a higher speed than wind two. So you'll see wind two increases once they're equal. But wind two can be higher than wind one, and wind one can be lower than wind two. So be aware of that. Something else to be aware of is that windage one and two is a culmination of data. It is your spin drift, your horizontal Coriolis, and your wind. So if you were to go in there and you were to turn, you can see the hard data here if you want, but if you were to go in here and turn one of those off, and in this case, we'll turn off spin drift. Um, and we'll hit OK. And you can see now it's off. It's removed from the firing solution. So just be aware of that. That You can turn those secondary effects on and off, but they are calculated. You see that jump? They are calculated into wind one and wind two. And that would be horizontal Coriolis, your spin drift, and your wind. Now, when it comes to wind one, wind one also controls aerodynamic jump. And you can see that here it's turned on and it's currently about a tenth of a mil. If I adjust wind speed one, I want you to watch the elevation call. If I adjust wind speed one, you'll see the elevation changes. Aerodynamic jump is activated here. And one of the effects of aerodynamic jump is that you can actually get an elevation adjustment at your zero range. So I'm going to go ahead and set the zero range to 100 or the range to the zero range, which is 100 yards in this case, and you'll see that there's actually an elevation adjustment. If I set the wind to 12 o'clock, that goes away. If I reduce the wind down to zero, you'll see that that goes away. Um, so just be aware that aerodynamic jump, which is controlled with wind speed one, if I adjust wind speed two, you'll see nothing happens to the elevation. But that elevation um, actually does have a wind factor in it called aerodynamic jump. So just be aware of that. If you ever see this where we're at our zero range, I'll show you here. So our zero range is 100 yards and we're at 100 yards. Um, th that could be why. That's one of the reasons that, could be, that you could be seeing that. And that's an adjustment that you need to make. It's also an adjustment that you should consider removing from your scope when you zero it. If I was zeroing this right now using this wind one and wind two, what I would actually do is... Okay, done there. I would update all the target information, but I would look in here and I'd go, with the current wind conditions, I should actually take a tenth of a mil off for this to be a true zero. And that's how that can be useful as well when using wind one and wind two. But that's how to use wind one and wind two. Hopefully this uh, the video was helpful. Please like and subscribe to our videos. And if you need help or have any questions, you can always open the navigation menu here. Click
click the support button and send us a support email and we'll be happy to assist. Thank you and I hope you have a good day.